गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ विवेक वेल्सो आई एम एन ए डब्ल्यू एस ए आई हीरो यू माइट बी वंडरिंग वॉट इज़ अ ए आई हीरो इट्स इट्स समथिंग न्यू कैटेगरी सो ए डब्ल्यू एस जस्ट री नेम द मशीन लर्निंग हीरोज कैटेगरी टू ए आई हीरोज कैटेगरी सो आई हैव बीन अ फॉर्मर ए डब्ल्यू एस कम्युनिटी बिल्डर एंड ए डब्ल्यू एस एम्बेसडर आई हैव ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द इंडस्ट्री and i am excited to talk about the transforming fins of ai dlc with uh, kiro by show of hands how many of you uh, have used kiro excellent so even if you have not used kiro there are 99 sessions on kiro this reinvent so do um, sign up for those uh, breakout sessions uh, on kiro so without further ado we are going to talk about the challenges in uh, fins of development cycle and how the spec driven workflow with uh, kiro assist with ai dlc and i'll share the practical examples with best practices and it's all available in my github repo that i will share at the end so you can feel free to clone and uh, experiment with it so ha have everyone seen the explosion today for technical debt that uh, happened excellent so that was using aws transform but as you know technical debt is the invisible drag on enterprise innovation and more than 20% of the id budget is spent on uh, technical debt issues so the developers i worked with they spend more than an hour every day to fix all these lambda runtime issues end of life uh, support and container based image valid validations so uh, it's kind of uh, ongoing issue the second uh, issue when working with the regulated industries is the compliance burden so there are heavy penalties and fines if uh, the application is not compliant and re with the regulatory requirements and even if i have to make a single line of code change i have to run the code through the whole pipeline which takes 5 minutes sometimes through the pipeline and that's not a good developer experience so how do we shift left and instead of the reactive approach then the third is all the piling up of the incidents and uh, unpatched open source dependency vulnerabilities that leads to a huge security debt in the organization now presenting the kiro spec driven workflow so to summarize the spec driven workflow consists of uh, kiro specs which is a collection of the kiro requirements design architecture and the task it's kind of a declarative way of producing code so kiro compiles the specs into code even though these llms are not deterministic you can enforce that uh, through the agent steering and that can be used for achieving the compliance then we'll talk about the agent hooks so agent hooks take care of all the manual mundane task like uh, updating documentation nobody likes to update the documentation every time you change an api endpoint so with agent hooks you can automate all that and also i'll show you how to implement the policy as code using agent hooks then there is a mcp server capability i'll show you how i can use the uh, diagrams mcp server to speed up the developer experience also mcp servers let you connect to your organization data like uh, confluence sharepoint jira and uh, get that output to the, the llm so it can produce more uh, accurate data uh, more accurate application code with uh, the mcp servers and finally the kiro cli which you might have used the q cli it's the rebranded uh, as kiro cli and i'll show you how the uh, sub agents can be used to improve the productivity and context engineering so let's start with the agent steering i built a simple loan approval microservice so it's a api gateway with a lambda backend and lambda has got the business logic and uh, it saves the results to dynamo db and there is a cloud watch for logging so i implemented this using uh, cdk which is a iac tool and written in uh, typescript and the python was run uh, and the lambda was run in the python uh, programming language and kiro built all this uh, in less than uh, an hour so what happens when you use the state of the art models like cloud opus 4.5 because of its training data the cdk libraries they are still 2.100 instead of uh, 2.170 which is a huge technical debt even the typescript libraries are way old then what about the python runtimes 
Claude doesn't know that Python 3.9 was end of life in October 2025. So if I push this code to higher environments, I'm going to get a huge chain of emails. So how should I uh, fix this autonomously using Kiro? The answer is global ag agent steering. So now Kiro supports global agent steering. You define one steering file on your workstation. It will apply that steering to all the projects in your uh, workstation locally. And what is a steering file? It's just a set of rules in plain English. So you can instruct Kiro to use all these instructions from the steering like use the stable versions use uh, do not hard code any secrets and all your organization uh, guidelines and uh, standards can be used in this uh, steering file and uh, one important tip is that use words like must critical so cloud models are especially tuned to uh, to those keywords like critical must so use those keywords then uh, cloud respects those uh, from the steering files and then if I have those steering files, I can just ask with a prompt to apply that steering file to my code. And then within one minute, the Kiro will up update all the packages and make it tech date free. As you know, Kiro is a VS Code 4, just like uh, uh, Windsurf and uh, Cursor. So uh, with uh, Kiro, you can install all the linting extensions like PyLint if you are using Python, ESLint for TypeScript. So with these extensions, you can get the quick uh, analysis of your code for any errors. And uh, if you're not following any best practices, Kiro will show you right in the IDE uh, with these linting extensions. But remember, you have to enable these uh, extensions. They are not enabled by default. Next up is the agent hooks, which I use for automation. And I'm going to show you how I use the policy as code using Hero for shift left. So AWS has a wonderful open source tool called CFN Guard that is kind of a DSL, domain specific language. And it can read a set of rules from um, uh, every framework. Like for PCI, there is a custom set of rules. For New York DFS, there is a set of rules. HIPAA has a set of rules. So everything is available in the GitHub repository, which is uh, shared here. And you can customize these rules for your organization. And it runs those DSL rules on the cloud formation templates. It can also run it on Kubernetes configuration files and Terraform plans. So it's not just uh, cloud formation, but I'll show you how to run in cloud formation. So you have the CFN guard tool, you run it uh, with the CLI on those rules and apply it on the configuration locally, the cloud formation configuration, uh, without run, pushing it on the cloud. And then once all the rules pass, then you deploy. So that's the two-step process. But I don't want to do manual execution. So how do I do that using agent hooks? I just tell Hero to create an agent hook for me. And how do I trigger it? Just when the infrastructure file is changed on the file save action, it will trigger these uh, hooks. So I just uh, showed the hook how it run it, just to point to fractional credits and just shows me what rules are passed with, uh, within the ID in Hero. Now there is another way to run the cloud formation guard using AWS toolkit. So if you have been following the reInvent releases, AWS released the CloudFormation language server that has now the capability to show you the CloudFormation um, stack errors, everything within the Akiro ID. So you don't have to go to AWS console and do context switching anymore. Everything is available within Kiro. And the same guard rules can be applied within the AWS toolkit in the settings. And this is very helpful if you are using CloudFormation, YAML, or JSON. The other thing I want to share is that uh, if you are using JSON files, then it's always good to use JSON when you are running the CDK guard, because in the YAML, the intrinsic extensions like exclamation, those are sometimes don't work very good. So the JSON format is uh, very good for uh, using the cloud formation guard. And with the toolkit, this is how it shows. Whatever errors you have with the uh, YAML configuration in the stack, it will just highlight with the squiggly blue lines 
and within the stack so you don't have to run anything so this is very helpful if you are using the yaml files then uh, my favorite is the mcp tools and now aws uh, kiro has made it very easy to install mcp servers from kiro.dev website so all the weighted mcp servers are listed on the kiro.dev and earlier there used to be documentation server aws api server so now there is one unified AWS MCP server that can be installed in one single click and enabled from Kiro. And earlier it used to be very difficult to share MCP files across your team because of the tokens. So you had to redact those uh, token variables and share it across the teams. But now with the support for environment variables in Kiro, you don't have to do that. You can share your MCP JSON files within your team. It simplifies the dev team development. And when another team member uses it, it asks for the confirmation that you have to approve that environment variable locally on your side and then uh, run it. So my favorite is the diagrams one. And earlier I used to take an hour to create the draw IO diagram, architecture diagram, but now with diagrams MCP, it's less than a minute to generate the architecture diagrams. So there are also other uh, useful MCP servers like the headless Chrome, DevTools browser, so it runs the, it's very useful for debugging the UI. It runs uh, the um, Chrome DevTools and finds the errors for you and the agent then can do the debugging. It's very useful for the front-end applications. Then the last one is the Kiro CLI, which is the rebranding of the QCLI. And as you know, context is the king in coding assistance. So whenever if I have a large code base after four to five prompts, I see my context fills up 100% and then I have to start from scratch again. So how do I solve this problem? So one solution is the custom agents. With the custom agents, you can create dedicated agents for a reviewer agent, like a architecture agent, a compliance agent. And with these specialized agents, your context is heavily, it's optimized and you don't, run out of the context window. So there's a two-step process using uh, Kiro CLI for creating custom agents. Using slash agent create command, and then it will prompt you for the JSON for the configuration for that uh, agent. So what is the agent configuration? It's just a JSON file where you have to give the name of the MCP server that you are going to use for the agent and the prompt and the steering files, that's it. So if you are working on front end, use the front end uh, MCP server like the Chrome DevTools MCP server. You don't have to pass all the MCP servers that will take up your context. So that's a very efficient way of uh, using uh, custom agents. And launching the custom agents is just a single uh, command. So with delegate launch, it will launch that agent in the background and then do its task and then report back the status. So then uh, you can continue with your next task. The second version to run these agents is uh, using slash agent swap command, which I haven't shown here. And with that, the agent comes in the foreground and then it uh, will be the default agent and you can uh, work on that uh, code review agent or the compliance agent. So I end up with a famous quote from Henry Ford who transformed the automobile industry just like Kiro is transforming the financial services and industry and any other industry for AI agentic AI coding. Finally, here's uh, my QR code for the GitHub repo on the top right. Feel free to scan it. It has all these examples shared in the demo and connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, I'm available uh, at the back after this uh, talk. So I would love to hear about your experiences with uh, Kiro and uh, how, you, how you use Kiro for your projects. And uh, remember to uh, complete the session survey in the app that really helps the team. Thank you.